Hello, so today I am in my gown and I have my coffee in my Snow White mug. Um, I wanted to come in today because after I finished the James Joyce biography, I basically had a massive burst in all the reading. I think it's because I've been stuck on that book for so long that then I was like, there's so many other books that I'm free to read now that I finished that one. So um, I went on to read this book, The Silent Woman by Janet Malcolm, which is a biography on Sylvia Plath. Um, I got this out from the library before it closed down for lockdown. So I basically have this for the foreseeable future, but I've read it now. So, I mean, I don't really need it anymore. But anyway, um, I have read a Plath biography before. And the one I read before is called Bit of Fame by Anne Stevenson. And I've read that one a few times because um, poss that's one of my favourite literary biographies, actually. Even though there's a lot of faults with um, Bit of Fame, um, which I'll get into a bit later on. But um, for now, I want to just talk about what I've been up to. So I'm tired today because I had to submit... A portfolio for um, my poetry module that I'm doing that I've done this semester and the deadline for it was noon and now it is two o'clock and I submitted it before schedule so I'm happy with that and now I have the whole summer to read and get a job um, so that's what I'm doing and Later on today, well, after this video, I am going to Halfords because my car has a popped back tyre. I found a nail in it. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. Um, so, yes, let's get into this. So this is only about 200. Yeah, about 200 pages. It's like 203 pages. And... Um, I did actually really, really enjoy this and I devoured it, I think, in like two days. Normally, I do read books quite quickly, I think. It was only, I think, spending 10 minutes reading that James Joyce biography is probably one of the, probably the longest time I've actually spent reading a book. But that only took so long because I was working full time and, you know, I was studying and reading stuff for that as well, so... That's why it took a bit longer, but I did still enjoy doing the choice. If I didn't enjoy it, I'd just put it down. Um, but this book, so, um, obviously, Sylvie Platt on the front next to Ted Hughes in his handsome youth. Um, so, I got into Platt in my first year at uni, so maybe like five, about five years ago. And I love Sylvia Plath. So there I have a, just a printed out copy of this edition of Ariel. So I love this edition by Faber and Faber. So this is my edition that I've had for a few years now. So it's getting pretty tatty. Like you can see it's pretty filthy and full of underlinings and shit. Um, so, I mean, that's probably quite cringy that I have a um, printout thing of an edition, but I do really, really like that cover. And it's my room, so I can decorate it how I want. Um, but anyway, on to this. So, this calls itself a biography, but um, it isn't really a biography to that extent and um, what it more is is a discussion on plath biography um so when i first got this book out from the library it was in the first year of uni when i really got into sylvia plath and i wanted to find out more about her and i took out this um because i was like well it's short you know it says it's completely brilliant on the front it's one of the most gripping and provoking things i have read about biography um, it's intellectually explosive, morally challenging and enormous fun. So I thought, wow, you know, this is obviously 
the plethography. And I think a lot of people probably would consider it to be the plethography or like the best thing that comes to a biography on Plath because Plath's such a controversial figure to do for a biography because, um, well, there's all sorts of reasons. But anyway, the first time I got this book out from the library, I read like seven pages of it and then put it down and I wasn't liking it. And I think that's because this biography doesn't go the typical route for a biography. So like your standard biography goes from birth to death, that sort of thing, which I prefer that structure personally. Um, but it, it does depend on what kind of biography it is. So for this biography, I think even though Malcolm avoids that, it really works and it's fantastic at it. But when I first read it, um, I don't think I knew that much about Platt. So reading a book that was more discursive rather than giving me more the facts of someone's life or as close as you can get to the facts. Like it doesn't really go in that much on, you know, the type of the types of you know, pots and pans Sylvia Plath used, or um, what her childhood was really like, or um, it doesn't have that much literary analysis in it. Um, whereas a book like Bit of Fame by Anne Stevenson, that is more the biography I like for Plath, even though there's huge flaws in that biography. And what this book does is it discusses flaws like that. Um, so when I first picked up this book, um, the discursive nature wasn't really what I wanted. So when I was reading it and she, Malcolm was discussing, you know, the problems with Bit of Fame and that sort of thing, I was like, haven't read Bit of Fame, so don't really know what you're talking about. Um, so coming back to this a few years later really helped. And although Bit of Fame is still my favourite, just because I really like the literary analysis in that book and... Um, what else? I just think it's a good, um, I wouldn't call it an achievement because it fails in a lot of places, but it's a really good attempt. It's a really good attempt at um, trying to fit Platt's life into your standard, you know, literary biography framework, I think, in having, you know, a birth to death thing. When Plath, who had you know, such a short life, really. Um, you know, having such a short life, I think Anne Stevenson manages to do a lot of things. But I this book also manages to explain why she couldn't do some of the other things. So it really goes into a behind-the-scenes look at what being a biographer on Plath is like. And after you know, Sylvia died, um, you know, two years later they published Ariel, you know, Hughes edited the manuscript, took out some poems, put some in, um, published it, even though, you know, he owned all the rights to it because they were still married. So he owned the Plath estate, he became the literary executor, and he could have just never published anything if he didn't want to. You know, people criticise Hughes a lot, but, you know, really... If he hated Sylvia Plath and, you know, he was such a terrible husband and a, you know, a terrible poet, then he wouldn't have done Sylvia the justice that he did. Um, so, I mean, that's controversial, but um, the book really gets into that look at things. But because um, Hughes's family had all, all the rights of Sylvia's work, biographers who are interested in Sylvia Plath, they had to, and they still have to, go through the Hughes family for all the material that they want to look at for Plath to get the permission to look at it. So scores of biographers from, I guess, the late 70s onwards to now, when they like, you know, show interest in doing a Plath biography. Um, I don't think Alwyn Hughes, Ted Hughes's sister is head of it anymore because she's probably too old. I think Carol Hughes, Ted Hughes's wife, might be head of it now. But I don't know. Anyway, but um, they would have to go through Alwyn Hughes, Ted Hughes's sister, you know, about, you know, securing rights, discussing what the biography is going to be like, what kind of look it's going to be into Sylvia's life and Ted's life. Because obviously, if you're going to do a biography on Sylvia Plath, you basically have to look at Ted Hughes's life. 
to get for that period when they were together. And it really goes into describing just the, I don't know what you'd call it, tiger's nest of what doing a biography on Plath would be like when you've got to deal with Alwyn Hughes. Um, and I guess all the criticism that the biography wouldn't have anyway. So Alwyn Hughes and Sylvia didn't get along when they were alive, well, when Sylvia was alive. And um, the book really goes on to describe in a really tender, intelligent way the kind of effect suicide had on that family where especially like someone like Sylvia who's a writer and artist and they she only got big afterwards that they're left with um you know her legacy so they have to go through all the politics of dealing with her work even though you know Owen Hughes as a person they didn't get on so and you know Owen Hughes isn't you know She's not a li she wasn't a literary editor that had you know been groomed for a role like that. Hughes kind of just put her into it because he couldn't deal with it himself, which is understandable. But um, it really was really fascinating to look at it because the way Malcolm goes into it, it's she does it from a really personal perspective, but she manages to do it without inserting herself into it too much so she basically you kind of feel like you're reading um a kind of piece of more personal non-fiction about basically like malcolm's own relationship to plath that's kind of what it feels like at points so malcolm goes through discussing like the dinners she has with Owen hughes and that kind of thing and um she goes through dinners like she goes to like um other biographers' houses, that past biographers of Plath's houses. She meets them, talks about them with problems they had and that kind of thing. And um, that made it really um, compelling, I think, because you get the sense of it being behind the scenes and um, not just being, you know, ta-da and showy with a biography, like Anne Stevenson is in Bit of Fame, where she tries to orchestrate it so that it looks like, yes, her life was like this. And really, Malcolm is saying, you know, we never will really know what her life will be like, especially in the final years that a lot of people are more interested in. Like, Hughes destroyed her diaries at that time. So we only have people's, um, you know, what people's versions of it were like when they met her. And even they're not really very um, reliable. So um, she really goes into that and that really, really worked for me. She also, um, the other thing about platographers is that they have to kind of suck up to the Hughes estate. Um, historically, they've had to do that because the Hughes family are the ones who have all the rights. So they can't just um, go behind the scenes and say, no, I'll win, you know, I'm going to write this biography about um, Sylvia Plath, but I'm not going to mention Hughes at all in any way, apart from that they were married. Not at all. And then, you know, before it goes to print, put in all the dirty details. Like, they couldn't do that because the Plath, like, the Hughes Plath estate would basically just sue the biographer. But what Malcolm does is, I don't really know how she finagled around it, except that she was quite fair to Hughes. Um, that's one way I could put it. Like, there's one point where she puts in about um she criticizes hughes about um you know the books that came out about plath that the plath estate and the hughes estate allowed like um sylvia's mother aurelia came out with letters home when you know plath critics and you know the plath hughes family are like stop reading her biographically stop it but then they're putting out all this biographical material and then malcolm is kind of being like um you know, Hughes, were you cashing in on that? And they kind of go through all the politics about how it can seem like they're cashing in on it, but it's more complex than that. So, um, you know, like, for instance, Aurelia felt that with books like The Bell Jar, that people read autobiographically, that she was given a really bad rap and she wanted to put it that Sylvia wasn't this, you know, 
daughter that hates her mother. So she put out those letters from home. And then Malcolm is saying that, you know, this family didn't quite understand that that was how Plath wanted to be thought of as a writer, possibly. You know, she wanted that freedom. Um, but I don't think that the books they put out, she doesn't say that by the family putting out books and things like that, that that takes away from Plath. She just says that it murkies the waters. So um, that was really good. And other things she said about Hughes was that, um, you know, obviously in the 80s, like Hughes got like roasted, like constantly about it. You know, all the stuff that happened with Puff when she died and the way he allegedly treated her going up to her death. And Malcolm was quite fair about that. Like she mentions those rumours and then she mentioned some of like intimate letters. So the thing I liked about this biography is that Malcolm knows we already know, you know, the basics about Sylvia Plath's life and Hughes's marriage with Plath. So what she's good at doing is, you know, siphoning through the material, you know, that in the Plath Hughes mythology that we do know and giving us extra detail. So there were like extra letters that I'd never read before. And I've read Plath's journals, I guess, quite a lot of critical material on Plath and some on Hughes. Um, but she was really good at um, putting in extra details such as um, like later on in Hughes's life when he was reacting to it. I think that's the great thing about doing, looking at a biography that came out. Um, when did it come out? 2000, oh no, 1993. So late 90s, basically just before Hughes died. And Obviously, around that time, I guess, Hughes was writing birthday letters or he published birthday letters. I think he was, well, either one of those. So he was more retrospective about the marriage then, I think. And there were some letters where he wrote where he said, um, you know, he'd never hold anything against Sylvia about how she reacted because he realised, you know, the issue she had. So I thought that was really, really sweet, actually. Um, and that really got the sense that, you know, if he felt he'd done wrong, he was sorry for it. Like, really, really sorry. Um, and I also thought the book did really well at um, shielding Frida and Nicholas from readers. Like, it didn't go into them too much, which I liked. Um, the only thing I didn't really like is the title, The Silent Woman. I was like, I mean, there's audio recordings of Sylvia Plath, there's interviews with her, so even though she didn't get big till after she died, you know, she wasn't silent because we did hear her speak. Um, so the silent woman, I didn't really get that much, but I did think it was a really, really good look at Plath biography. So if you're interested in Sylvia Plath, I would recommend this, but if you're new to Plath, I would probably recommend Bit of Fame as a biography to start with, and I think that's probably better at getting you into the discussion on Plath Biography. Um, so yes, that was a riveting read and I'm really glad I read it. Um, what else? So next on my list, I'm going to be reading Ladies Almanac by Juna Barnes, but I'll probably upload some more videos on some books I've read um, between you know this one and that one, because I've probably read about 20 books between them so until then okay sis 